Hi, Cam here, The Jordan Chef, and welcome to my kitchen. Today, I'm going to be making prime rib pie from smoked prime rib. You can see that YouTube video that I have on there already. Fantastic, it's great every time, it's perfect. It comes up medium rare. I like to do a lot, as I said, because I like leftovers. So it's a great way, great simple way to use up some leftover roast beef um, and make a fantastic shepherd's pie. So a few things here. Here I have, I have some uh, beautiful here leftover prime rib. I've got some uh, leftover mashed potatoes, uh, which I'll just probably reheat a little bit. I'll use that. If I need more, I'll just make a little bit more and add to it. Um, another thing I put in is, I love Yorkshire pudding. So I've got uh, two leftover Yorkshire puddings, which I'm going to put into the, I'll put one of them anyway into the uh, prime rib pie. Uh, corn niblets or peas. What's the debate? My buddy Rob hates peas, absolutely hates peas, so he always uses corn. I put peas in. Anyway, I'm going to put a little bit of each in. It's really good. Uh, leftover gravy, some of that in, and some uh, Worcestershire or woo sauce. Now, if you don't have Yorkshire pudding, that's fine. You can use some uh, uh, breadcrumbs like the panko, or you can take uh, just a little bit of bread. It's just to help sop up some of the juice, because uh, we are using everything in there. We're not wasting a thing. Uh, we're not putting the string in. So uh, anyway, now when we're finished making them, we've got these great little disposable pans. So I'm gonna be doing uh, three of these, which is a great portion for two. And then uh, some of these little guys here, they even have lids, uh, dollar store, a uh, little, great little portion for one. So uh, we'll be making those up and uh, I'm actually going to be baking them on the Traeger. Uh, I have a little bit of smoke, but for about 350, uh, for about 45 minutes or so, um, and then letting them cool and then I'll pack them up and freeze them. And uh, they're just great at any time. So first things first, just going to give you an idea how much uh, prime rib I have here. So I'm on a great nice scale here. So I've already washed my hands and everything. Just the main piece, that beautiful piece there. So that right there is uh, just over almost three pounds. And when I add these other bits on there, I've got about three pounds. So about three pounds of beef. Oh, also, um, uh, I'm going to get a, uh, an onion and some fresh garlic. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to uh, take an onion, uh, chop it up roughly, and then we put it into the uh, food processor, uh, just give it a nice chop, put it in a bowl. Then we'll take our prime rib, cut that in chunks, gonna process that, kind of puree it, mince it all, mix that in, and then we just start mixing everything in a bowl. There is no real science to the proportions. I'll try and roughly tell you what I'm putting in, but it's not exact. Uh, salt and pepper I do not put in because the Montreal steak uh, spice, which is crusting that prime rib, is already there, and that probably will give us enough salt and pepper. So, I'll get started here. I'm going to start with uh, at least half of this onion, if not uh, uh, the whole thing. And 
into the processor. that I, after I took some uh, beef for uh, some sandwiches. So I just uh, trimmed off the fat and I want to keep that because all the fat is going to go inside here. You don't want to overload your food processor or it will bind and slow down and stop on you. So I'm going to do this probably in a couple batches. So that's just beautiful stuff there. string left there, you want to make sure you don't get string in there. And I'm going to uh, leave out some of the chunks of just uh, just the beef and I'm just gonna put just the fat pieces in there. It's the fat that I want to really mince well. Uh, this beef here, I will do that coarser. I might have too much in here. So I'll just pick out some of the pieces with just more meat. I said you don't want to overload it because it will stop, then you'll have a little bit of a mess. See?
I have to have another one of these. Delicious. Mm. Mm. Yum. Yorkshire pudding or two. And then I'm going to add a little bit of gravy in there just to moisten it up. gravy. Let me just get a glove and use my hand. Okay, so I'm just going to help mix all that in. If you had some uh, Mushrooms, you could put it in there. If you had cooked carrots with your dinner, you could dice up some of that and put it in. Um, well, things that are going to give some moisture and have flavor. So now I'm going to add about a couple tablespoons of woo. Start with a half a can of niblets, some frozen peas, a cup. Mix that up. And from here, <clears throat> I'm going to start filling some of my pans. So very simple. So you got three larger ones for two hungrier people, and then three small ones for a great little meal. So now we'll get ready with the potatoes. My mashed potatoes are a little bit stiff because they've been in the fridge. I'm just going to give them. Uh, a little touch of uh, Chef Mike, the microwave, and just uh, warm them up a little bit, and then I'll just uh, put a layer on these. Okay, I'll just warm this up a little bit. Try it with a glove here. Just give it a little mix. And then I'll just try to just kind of portion it out a little bit. But I've got more potatoes, which I may need to make. So yeah, I don't have enough here. I will make some more mashed. In the meantime, we'll get these ones ready. So it's ready for it. I'll be talking about the water. So I'm going to make some 
make up some more mashed. Uh, save a lot of time from boiling and peeling and all that stuff. Find these uh, bagged uh, fresh mashed potatoes. They're not instant. They're real and they're really good. So I'll put these in a glass bowl and then I'll add uh, sour cream uh, and cheese whiz. Uh, a bunch of that and butter. Mix it all up, heat it up. Makes it really, really good. That's what I did to these, so I'll do the same. Okay, so the way I put these mashed potatoes together, fat-free sour cream, because we don't want any fat. Uh, anyway, it's a little bit better than the regular stuff. So I'll just put in oh, a couple nice big scoops of that in there. Cheese whiz. And yeah, I am generous with this stuff. I'll put in, oh, a bunch more. <laughs> Probably that about that much. Yeah, they're really good. Not good for you, but it looks like mustard, but that is cheese. And butter, you gotta have butter in there. A couple good scoops of that. And we'll just kind of incorporate this a little bit. Give it over to Chef Mike. Just gonna like to lots of fresh ground pepper and uh, some sea salt. And that's enough salt. So I'll just mix this up and bring it back. So we just. Uh, Put this in the microwave. Just want to incorporate all those wonderful flavors. Okay. So now I'm going to just uh, top all of these up with some more taters. Keep them underneath the rim because uh, when they cook, it will bubble up. You can do whatever design you want on these. The fork gives nice little ridges or swirls, whatever. These uh, potatoes are delicious. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's going to be good. It was uh, really raining hard a little bit, so everything's wet outside. Normally, I would get the trader going at uh, 350. Uh, and put these on them for probably about uh, 45 minutes or so. I'd put a tray underneath it, a disposable tray, because I'm going to be taking these containers and I'm going to want to put them in the freezer and I don't want any of the black stuff from the bottom of it, from the smoker, just touching other things that are in my freezer. So instead I've got the oven on, I'm going to put these on a tray, even in the oven, because things will bubble over a little bit. Uh, I've got it on for 350 right now. So I'll put them in there for again about 45 minutes until things start to brown. You want to start to get that, that wonderful brown crust around the outside. So here we are, we've got our uh, little, not shepherd's pie, prime rib pie. Because shepherd's pie is made with lamb. This is beef. So if I called it shepherd's pie, people would be writing in and saying that's not shepherd's pie, it's made with lamb. Yeah, I know that. That's why I'm calling it prime rib pie. Anyway, we're going to get these in the oven. and. Uh, Taking a look and having a taste. Just pull these out of the oven. Look at those. Bubbling away. Nice little bit of browning on them. So 
So now we're, we're going to have one of these tonight, and the other ones we're going to pack up. <clears throat> so I'm just going to pick one of these. And just set it on there. And I'm going to let that rest for uh, probably about uh, 10 minutes, because it's going to be very hot, and if I cut into it right now, it's going to move everywhere. The, the liquid inside there is going to be a little, little messier. So it'll firm up a little bit if I just let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then we'll be back. Primary pie has been sitting here for about uh, 10 minutes, just cooling down a little bit. The tricky part is always getting these things out of the pan. So I'm just going to, because it is quite liquidy, but hopefully not too liquidy, to uh, reduce some of the liquid, we'd add uh, more breadcrumbs. But I'm going to try use a solid spatula to try and lift out as best I can. Come on, come on. It smells amazing. Of course they always don't look so pretty, but it's pie, right? Still quite hot. So uh, that's the finished result. You can see the steam from it. Could let it cool down a little bit more. You can always tweak it a little bit. Um, if I find there's too much liquid in there, then just add a little more breadcrumbs. The Yorkies give it flavor and they help absorb some of that stuff, but I guess I could have added a little bit. So I'm just going to uh, Take some of this, let it cool a little bit. When we uh, reheat these, uh, we'll normally um, crispen them up a little bit more. Uh, these are done, ready to go in the freezer, ready to eat now. But normally I'd have a little bit more of a, a crust on there, just from uh, some butter and maybe put the broiler on. Just looking, there is a little bit more liquid in there, so I'd add a few more breadcrumbs, but you just change it every now and then. Time for a taster. Mmm. Delicious. Oh, that's ever good. Those potatoes are great on there too. But you don't need to add anything else. It's so easy to make uh, prime rib pie. Not shepherd's pie. Prime rib pie. Same thing with beef. Um, so simple. So delicious. Didn't add any salt or pepper inside the meat mixture. All the flavors are there from the beef and the Montreal steak from the prime rib. Mm. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll even dribble a few uh, drops of uh, hot sauce in a bite. That's always really good too. Just uh, oh. a little on there. Mm. Delicious. Oh, and enjoy this. Simple easy pie. Um, if I did on the smoker, it would have had a little bit more smoky flavor getting into the potatoes anyway. Uh, I could have added a little bit of liquid smoke if I really wanted that taste, but I just wanted to use up um, the prime rib leftovers and the mashed potatoes and everything else in a great creative way to have a great meal. And right now I have uh, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten meals here. So it helps bring the cost of the prime rib all down. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. Let me know your thoughts. Tweak it, make it your own, add different things. It's all good. And uh, thanks for tuning in and happy smoking. Thanks a lot.